But ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, after that 2016 season, as good as it was, this is where his career, it starts heading in a downhill slope. What we're about to get into, I just wanna prepare you, it is bad, and I mean very, very, very bad to say the least. When I was doing all my research for this video, I came to the conclusion that this is one of the most mysterious downfalls I've ever seen and covered. Over 30 plus years ago, on March 15th of 1990, a college football legend was born. If you had any childhood whatsoever, you remember his mixtape. It got over tens of millions of views. And I think a main reason his mixtape video went viral all over YouTube is because at the time, you didn't see those types of videos. And I could sit up here and hype up that video for the next five to six minutes, but we all know this, it is a masterpiece. From the music, the editing, the highlights, everything put together, it was a perfect storm. As great as the video was though, the player in the video, he was even better. In high school, he had over 2,600 rushing yards and 34 touchdowns. Oh, wait a minute. He thought I was talking about his entire career. No, no, no. That was in one season. He then proceeded to dominate the college level, and when he got done with that, he declared for the NFL draft and got selected in the first round with the eighth overall pick. If that wasn't impressive enough, let me throw this in here. He was a 5'8", 175-pound wide receiver. Come to think about it, has there ever been a 5'8 wide receiver taken in the first 10 picks? I don't know. I hope that gives you somewhat of a perspective, though, of just how good this guy was. And it wasn't a mystery. He was so highly regarded due to one thing and one thing only. His blazing, and I mean blazing speed. And it seemed like he was all but destined to have a great and very successful NFL career. There was no red flags. He was an extremely hard worker, and he never got in off-the-field trouble. But however, let's just say things didn't exactly go the way that he hope they go and that's a nice way of putting it. And matter of fact, if you want specifics here, he never had a season in the NFL with over 510 receiving yards. When I was doing all my research for this video, I came to the conclusion that this is one of the most mysterious downfalls I've ever seen and covered. And it's due to numerous different things and factors that, well, foreshadowing here, we're gonna get into all in this video. It's head scratching, man, it really is. And there's been a ton of questions that people have been asking about this guy even till this day, but it all circles back to the one. And I mean the one big question we're going to try to get to the bottom of in today's video. What really happened to Tavon Austin? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, hope all of you are having a great and fantastic day. If not, hope this video can make it a little bit better. Major shout out to Mad Dog Sports for recommending this video, as you can see right here. And actually, there's been about four to five comments recommending the Tavon Austin video. So here we are. And when I stumbled across the Tavon Austin comment myself, I was like, wait a minute. That's a great video idea because even I'm curious, where is this guy? What happened to him? I had immediate flashbacks as well because he's the mixtape legend. Every single time I see the name or hear the name Taylor on Austin, I think about his days at West Virginia and that mixtape. Shout out yet again to Mag Dog though for the recommendation. As always, if there's a player or a certain story situation you think is worthy of a story, feel free to drop a comment down below and we might make that video. If you haven't picked up on it by now, we make story videos based off of what you guys want to see in the comment section. Simple as that. Your boy Matt is a fan of the people and I want to get the people what they want. So strap in, buckle up, get you a snack, get you a popcorn, get you a favorite meal you like to eat when you watch a video because trust me, I do the same thing. But all right, Matt, blah, blah, shut the crap up. Now without further ado, let's get into it. Man, oh man, good old Tavon Austin. You already know. To get into a story, we got to throw it all the way back to where things started. He grew up in Baltimore, Maryland, and this is where he attended Dunbar High School. And in high school, he wasn't just an outstanding football player, but he was also good at basketball and he ran track. And although we know him as a wide receiver in high school, he was mostly a running back. But in all honesty here, it really didn't matter where you put him, just give him the ball and get out the way. Let him do his magic. And take a listen to this stat right here. He was Maryland Offensive Player of the Year not once, but twice. That's absurd in itself, and his senior season, like we said in the intro, he had over 2,660 rushing yards. But here's the even better part about that number. He did it on only 218 carries, which if you can't add that up, we're just doing some simple math here. He averaged over 10 yards per K. 
Terry. Straight up insanity to say the least, and he had 34 touchdowns on the ground that year and two punt return touchdowns. Coming out of high school, I wouldn't label him as a big time hot shot because he was only ranked as the 180th overall best player in the nation. He was listed as a four star recruit according to 24 7 Sports or composite rankings, and out of wide receivers, he was only listed as the 24th best receiver in the nation. And I don't want to sit up here and ridicule these rankings too much because they're projections, but I don't know how anybody watched Taylon Austin play in high school and say, you know what, I think there's 23 better wide receivers than him in the nation. It just doesn't make any sense, but I digress. It's worth noting, believe it or not, he wasn't recruited by your big time schools like Alabama, Georgia, Ohio State, none of that. He only had eight offers and they were from Rutgers, Pittsburgh, North Carolina, Michigan, Maryland, Illinois, Boston College, and West Virginia. And I don't blame the big time schools for not going after him because I'm gonna remind y'all like I gotta remind myself, he was only roughly five foot eight, 175 pounds. And probably coming out of high school, it's more realistic to say he was only about 160, 165. I think Tavon Austin, he was way ahead of his time, which we'll get to later in this video. But ultimately, these colleges that didn't recruit him, they failed to realize one thing speed kills. He was the definition of a speed demon. Now before we go any farther, I do want to throw this in there because I thought this was interesting. Some of the schools that were recruiting him, they were recruiting him to be a running back and some other schools were recruiting him to be a wide receiver. It seemed like the overall consensus though is that most schools were going to use him as a hybrid. And when he got to West Virginia, the funny thing about it was his primary position originally was running back. And this all goes back to the butterfly effect. It's crazy. What if he would have never switched over to wide receiver? Who knows what would have happened? We can play the if and but game all day long. The bottom line is he eventually switched over to a wide receiver early on in his career. And when I say early on in his career, let me give you some more context. He switched over as a true freshman. Occasionally, he took some handoffs here and there, but he was known as a wide receiver. And in 2009, like most freshmen, he didn't play that much. Only had 15 catches for 150 yards with one touchdown. On the ground, he did have six carries for 47 yards, which is a really good average of 7.8 and one touchdown there as well. But here's where he was utilized the most though in 2009 on kickoffs. He had 17 returns for 426 yards and one touchdown. And all in all for his freshman season, not too much to say. He was dipping his toes in the water. At this point in time in our story, I do want to clarify in 2009, his freshman season, nobody really knows who he is at this point. But that would quickly, and I mean quickly change within the matter of a year. Fast forward time into 2010, he wasn't just a guy that was getting a couple catches a game. He was a real deal weapon. He turned into a guy where teams were like, wait a minute, wait a minute. They're flipping through their scouting report going, wait. Who is Tavon Austin? Who is this kid? And I wouldn't even dare say he had some monstrous season, but he was making some noise. Had 58 catches for 787 yards, averaging over 13 yards per catch and eight touchdowns. That sophomore year for him in 2010, that is the year that single-handedly changed his life. And I know what all you're sitting there saying, well, Matt, what are you talking about, man? He didn't even have that great of a year. Look at his numbers, look at his stats, and I agree. But here's what happened in that 2010 season that's not gonna show up in the box score of the stat sheet he gained a ton of confidence. He realized, and the West Virginia coaching staff realized too, gotta give a major shout to them, that the only person who can stop Tavon Austin is Tavon Austin himself. And with him proving in 2010, hey, I'm not just a guy who can catch three to four balls a game, I can take over a game, that's all he needed. The rest was history. 2011 was his breakout year. He had over 100 catches for over 1,100 yards and eight touchdowns. But here's a kicker with that in 2011 as well. He also became the punt returner and he had nearly 1,000 yards in kickoff return yards. And oh yeah, I can't forget to mention though in there, he had two touchdowns on kickoffs. In that 2011 season, Tavon Austin showed everybody, I'm not just a good wide receiver, I'm a game changer. And I want y'all to take a look at these numbers. I'm gonna pop them up again. I'd say 98% of any other wide receivers that would be making the decision, should I go to a draft or not, they would have left after this 2011 season, right? And he was projected to go anywhere from I saw a late first round pick to an early third round pick. And even if he would have failed to, let's just say the third round or even the fourth round, you're still talking about a couple million dollars. That is life changing money for people. But ultimately, to make a really long story short here, he decided to come back to West Virginia to not only play for his team yet again, but to improve his draft stock even more. And we've seen countless stories and scenarios where guys come back to college to improve their draft stock and it backfires on them and they fall even farther in next year's draft. Well, for Tavon Austin, it was the complete opposite. Him returning for his senior season in 2012 was the best decision he's ever made in his life. And although his numbers in 2011 were really good, his numbers in 2012 were even better. Bumped up his receptions from 101 to 114, increased his receiving yards to nearly 1,300, and went from eight touchdowns to 12. 
But here's a kicker with this. In 2011, he only had 182 rushing yards. In 2012, he had 643. On the ground, he averaged 8.9 yards per carry. Unreal. And oh yeah, I can't forget to mention and throw in there. He had a measly 800 receiving, or not receiving yards, my apologies, kickoff return yards and another touchdown there as well. He showed yet again his senior season with teams preparing for him. I'm a game changer. I'm a game breaker and you can't stop me. And what's even more impressive about his 2012 season is these teams had three years of film on him already. And whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. Come on, man. You didn't think I was going to forget to talk about it and bring it up, did you? In 2012 as well, this is when the legendary, and I can't emphasize this enough, the legendary Tavon Austin senior year mixtape pick got released to YouTube. Obviously and unfortunately, I can't show the video due to copyright, but you've probably seen it if you're watching this video. And I'd hate to sit up here and say that video alone is the only reason Tavon Austin is remembered by people like me and you and it's the only reason he is a legend in the college football world because it's not just the video alone Tavon Austin when you take a look at his career at West Virginia I think he's got to go down as a legend even without the video but with that video it just solidifies him being a legend and you can't argue it it's just one of those things where you had to be there you had to be growing up around this time and era when this mixtape got released let's recap though his senior year he pops off he's going crazy he then has this video on YouTube it's going viral at this point in time in his life, it can't get too much better. But hold on, it does. He has no choice, his college career is over, and he declares for the NFL draft, and he was highly regarded and highly touted, and this is where he got selected in the first round with the eighth overall pick by the St. Louis Rams. Currently, we call him the Los Angeles Rams, but back in the day, St. Louis. I can't sit up here and emphasize enough how ridiculous it was, especially back then, for a five foot eight, 175 pound soaking wet wide receiver to get selected in the top 10 of the NFL draft. It was ludicrous. And let me clarify, I'm not saying it's ridiculous, ludicrous, whatever word you want to throw in there because I thought Tavon Austin was overhyped. No, 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 that's not what I'm saying whatsoever. The reason it was so ridiculous is because it was unusual at the time. Five foot eight, 175 pound wide receiver getting selected in the top 10 of the NFL draft. You just didn't see it every day. And to say there was a lot of hype surrounding Tavon Austin, that would be heavily understating it. And on June 13th in 2013, Tavon Austin inked a four-year, $12.75 million rookie contract. This contract also included a pretty sweet signing bonus of $7.6 million. Sadly, though, in that rookie season in 2013, he wasn't utilized a lot. Considering the circumstances, remember, we're talking about a top 10 pick in the NFL draft, you would think... What's the bare minimum for him you like to see? 700, 800 receiving yards? He didn't even get close to that. He only had 418 receiving yards. Eh, it's okay. And four touchdowns. And his best moment in that rookie season was definitely against the Colts, where he had not one but two receiving touchdowns over 100 yards and also had a 98-yard punt return touchdown. And although he stuffed the stat sheet in that game, outside of that, he didn't do too much. At the time, though, eh, not too big of a deal. No need to freak out. He's still a rookie. He's learning the ropes. Remember in college, he didn't go out there and have a 1,000 receiving yards his freshman year. You got to get used to it. It takes time. Going from high school to college, that is a huge jump itself. But going from college to the NFL, it's not even in the same atmosphere. Heading into that sophomore year of 2014, there was a ton of hype still surrounding him, and he actually had worse numbers in his rookie season. He only had 31 catches for 242 yards, which is miserable, but check this out. Zero touchdowns. At least that was receiving-wise. On the ground, he did have two touchdowns there, so that made up for it a little bit. But I think we can all agree here. His first two years, he definitely didn't live up to the hype, and everybody's like, okay, wait a minute. Do we have a bust on our hands here? 400 yards his rookie year, 200 yards his sophomore year? He had busts written all over him, or at least that's what it looked like. So you gotta think about it. By this point in time in our story, Tavon Austin has had not one but two years in the NFL where he has underperformed mightily. And now it's gone from the fans, the GM, the head coach, everybody involved thinking, yeah, we got a great talent on our hands, we just gotta give him some time to. All right, time's up. You gotta go out there and you gotta produce. Also gotta bring this up, and this should be common knowledge, the higher a guy gets selected and drafted, the faster people expect them to produce. If this were a case and scenario where Tavon Austin was selected in the third or fourth round, there wouldn't have been any pressure on whatsoever. But a top 10 pick, oh yeah, 
you got to get with the program. You got to start producing ASAP. So heading into that 2015 season, his now third year in the NFL, there's a lot of pressure on him. And I would say to a certain extent here, he rose to the occasion. Had his best year up to date, had 52 catches for 473 yards and five receiving touchdowns. On the ground though, take a look at this, 52 carries for 434 yards, averaging over eight yards a pop. That's insane in the NFL and four touchdowns there. 2015 as well, he also had a punt return touchdown. So that was nice to add to everything else. That was the cherry on top and i know his numbers don't jump off the board at you but i would say that 2015 season he had a really good year you gotta take everything into account here he had 500 receiving yards and five touchdowns and he also had 400 rushing yards and four touchdowns so combine that that's nearly a thousand in my humble opinion not bad not bad whatsoever is that up to the standard of the number eighth overall pick in the nfl draft I don't know. You guys let me know in the comment section. But for me, I thought it was a good year and he was heading in the right direction. It's also worth throwing this in there as well. And we're about to get to this more the later we get into this story. Tavon Austin really wasn't getting utilized to his full potential. They were trying to use him in every way possible. I'll give him credit for that. I had him returning punts, kickoffs, even running the ball. But I felt like on the receiver end, they could have done a little bit more. And although things weren't necessarily going as great as they probably expected them to, the Rams, they were happy with them. And in 2016, heading into that fourth year, they signed them to a four-year extension for $42 million. By this point in time in 2016, it is no longer the St. Louis Rams, it's the Los Angeles Rams. And in that year, he was even better, had 58 catches for over 500 yards and three touchdowns, receiving-wise. On the ground, he did drop off there, though, only at 159 rushing yards, but he did have 364 punt return yards. But ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, after that 2016 season, as good as it was, this is where his career, it starts heading and a downhill slope. What we're about to get into, I just wanna prepare you, it is bad, and I mean very, very, very bad to say the least. And some people have tried to argue the reason his career went this way is due to the head coach, which we'll get to in just a second. But first things first, I wanna show you stats and numbers. In 2017, in 16 games played, he only had 13 catches, not even one catch a game. And here's the sad part, man. He had 13 catches for only 47 yards. We're talking about Tavon Austin. The speed demon, only 47 receiving yards in one year? What happened? Absolute craziness, you hate to see it. However, he did have 59 carries for 270 yards, so that was nice to see. And I know what you're sitting there saying, Matt, what in the crap happened, man? What happened to his production? Because I was thinking the same thing when I was doing my research. Well, come to find out in 2017, you can chop this up as a coincidence, but it's really not. This is when the Rams, they hired Sean McVay. And Sean McVay, he pretty much erased him from the entire offensive scheme. As far as it goes passing-wise, he did have 270 rushing yards, but still, that's not too crazy. It's just really odd how everything went down, because I'm going to remind you, only a year before the season where he only had 47 receiving yards, he signed a $42 million contract. As a wide receiver back then, that was insane. And then you got the new head coach icing out your new $42 million wide receiver. Things were not going good whatsoever, and in 2018, there was a lot of rumors and speculation going on that the Rams, they were going to move on from them, and that's what they did. In 2018, Tavon Austin was officially traded to the Dallas Cowboys in exchange for a 2018 six-round pick. When he was with the Cowboys, though, he was dealing with some minor injuries here and there, and unfortunately, in 2018, still a non-factor. Only appeared in seven games, and in those games had eight catches for 140 yards and two touchdowns. After battling some injuries in that 2018 season, in 2019, he got healthy, and this is where he appeared in 14 games. Unfortunately, though, he just couldn't get into the offensive scheme and system. He only had 13 catches for under 200 yards. By this point in time in our story, it's kind of looking like, man, there may be no reviving this guy's career whatsoever, and he may be on the last stretch here. From 2017 to 2019, he had three straight years of under 200 receiving yards. To go on top of all that, he's now at the point where he's battling injuries left and right. It didn't work out with the Cowboys, and in August of 2020, he signed with the San Francisco 49ers. This is where he was then replaced on the injury reserve list in September, but he was then released shortly after in October. In other terms here, he didn't even play for San Francisco whatsoever, but he was signed by the Green Bay Packers. And this is where he had to accept a harsh new reality. He wasn't going to be the star wide receiver like he was in high school or West Virginia or in his early days for the St. Louis Rams and then the Los Angeles Rams. 
he was going to be a backup. And for the Packers in 2020 as a backup, he only appeared in four games where he had five catches and 20 yards. Didn't wind up working there. And in August of 2021, this is when he signed with the Jacksonville Jaguars. But yet again, he's fighting the injury bug like every player does late in their career. He was placed on the injury reserve list in September 2021, only about roughly a month after he signed with them. And this is where we got a little bright spot in our story and a spark because he was reactivated and he appeared in 13 games. And in these 13 games for the Jaguars, he had 24 catches for 213 yards. Not bad, not bad whatsoever. At least for the Jaguars, he was given a better chance and opportunity to play a little bit more. It seemed like things were looking good for him there, but it turned out just to be a one-time thing because in 2022, he signed with the Buffalo Bills. He signed with them in the summer of 2022, and in August, this is when he got released. Although it was a release, though, they did re-sign him to the practice squad, but then he got released only a couple months after that as well. And that right there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, is the end of his NFL career. But whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. It's not the end of this video because I still got a lot of questions. Why didn't it work out for Tavon Austin? What went wrong in the NFL? I'm sure it's a combination of multiple different things, but here's one thing that I couldn't get over in this story. Tavon Austin, unlike 99% of these other people and players we do stories on, he didn't get in any trouble whatsoever on or off the field. Most times when we're making a downfall video, what's the reason for the player's downfall? themselves. They're their own biggest problem and they can't get out of their own way. Well, for Tavon Austin, I hate to say this, but this is a circumstance where he just wasn't good enough on the field or he didn't produce enough. It's just really mind-boggling and head-scratching for me to see a guy who was that talented coming out of high school and coming out of college, the eighth overall pick in the NFL draft, for his career to turn out the way it did without any off the field problems. So I've come to the executive decision that his career didn't work out for two different reasons. Reason number one is, he was ahead of his time. Tavon Austin in 2024, he's essentially Tyreek Hill 2.0. Number two, and we see this even till this day, he wasn't drafted to a team that suits him best. In the NFL and the NBA, a main reason a certain player is successful or not successful it's just due to the franchise they get drafted to. And it's extremely unfortunate because they can't control that. For example, if Tavon Austin was playing for Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes, I think his career would have turned out way differently. You see what I'm saying? It's the same thing in the NBA. Look at the Miami Heat. They are great at player development. Golden State Warriors the past 10 or so years, they've been good at that as well. Great franchise. Your success isn't totally, but I would say it's largely dependent on where you go, what team picks you. And we saw it. He was doing all right, but as soon as the Rams, they hired Sean McVay, Sean McVay didn't use him whatsoever. And I don't care who you are. If you're playing for a head coach that's not going to utilize you, you're not going to put up good numbers. It doesn't matter if you're a 99 overall. Detective Matt also being in the building here, he has deactivated his Instagram account. He does have a Twitter, but he's not a big social media guy. He's not posting too much. And although his NFL career wasn't the best and it didn't work out the way he probably wanted it to, he's still very successful in life in general. And I just love this story so much because Tavon Austin, I can't emphasize this enough, did not get in any trouble from at a young age of high school and middle school all the way up into now. Unless I missed something huge when I was doing all my research, and maybe I did, I didn't see any signs of him being a troublemaker. This is a guy who knew, hey, God gifted me with the ability to play football, and I'm going to do that, and I'm going to stay out of trouble, mind my business, and stack my money. And that is what he did. You can say what you want about him. Yeah, his NFL career, it might have flopped, but guess what? He got paid, and he was living the dream. Just to make it to the NFL alone and have a couple of seasons where you're having 500 receiving yards, that's outstanding. As to where it stands right now, the last we've seen of him is the last summer in 2023. He was posting some videos on his Twitter of him doing some football workouts. In these workouts, he wasn't tagging any teams, saying he's going to be back to playing in the NFL. It looks like he's just working out. And my best educated guess here, he's just doing this for... What's the phrase I'm looking for here? He's just doing this to stay in shape. From what I could tell, Tavon Austin has a really good head on his shoulders, and I like to assume he's very self-aware that he's not going to be back in the NFL. I'm wishing Mr. Tavon Austin the best of luck and whatever he wants to do in this life. I hope he succeeds at it. I'm extremely curious, though. Let me know your thoughts on this down below. But, uh, Romanin!